Hey guys, Buffy Game Bad today, bringing our video for our favorite weapon series for our Warzone weapons. Today we'll be covering a weapon that we've covered a little bit here in the past, but mainly today for the Verdansk Resurgence mini version, which is now currently in Warzone, especially with the Season 4 TDK and everything. So I want to build this weapon, we'll jump into some gameplay with it and walk you through uh, just some thoughts on the weapon itself. So go ahead and backing out here, we can see the final design for the Odin or the Ash 12 or is also known as the Shock 12. So this is really a community build by our community member, a uh, man named Nobody. So he really recommended this build to me initially uh, earlier or late last year, I want to say. And this thing, very good for close quarters combat, especially right now. I think it, it, definitely the best place to shine is the Verdansk Resurgence Mini, which is currently in Warzone Season 4 of the Cold War Integration. So Strip this thing down the base. We're going to be using the black asp blueprint here. So first off, what we'll do is for the muzzle, we're going to go ahead and throw on that monolithic suppressor. Now, typically you'd want the colossal suppressor, and I do use this a lot on and off too, but for a close quarters build, you really want the monolithic suppressor. I've done a couple builds with the colossus. You can even do some close quarters builds with that. However, mobility wise and everything for what we're using here, definitely recommend the monolithic suppressor gonna help you with your ergo quite a bit now the cons here being the aim down sight speed and the aim walking steadiness but you're still getting the sound suppression keep you off the minimap and you're getting the damage at range boost also so the only thing you're missing is the recoil control and obviously the range and everything like that uh that the colossal gives you but you can see your mobility is going to be that much worse so we'll go ahead and select that and then you can just compare you can see the mobility worse your accuracy and range goes up but mobility as well as control are worse with the colossus so we want to go ahead and select the monolithic here. Barrel, we're going to leave at base barrel for this particular build. This will get allow us to engage at those medium ranges within 60 meters, I would say, is where this thing is most effective. Now, laser, we're going to go ahead and run attack laser. This will help with the aim down sight speed, the aim walking stability, and the aim walking steadiness. The cons here being the laser is visible to enemies. Optic, we're going to go ahead and throw on a standard EOTAC or a holographic sight here. This will just hinder our ADS speed, but we already made up for that with the TAC laser. Stock, we'll leave at base. For our perk option here, we're going to go, because I'm picking this up as a ghost class right off the bat, so I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, fully loaded so we can have full ammo, especially with what we're using on this with this kit. We're going to need all the ammo we can get. So we'll go ahead and select fully loaded. We'll start with max ammo. Skip out on the grip options here. I've never really tried some of the grip options. I would be curious to try the rubberize and see if it does help with it to recoil any bit that's like significant, but we'll skip that. We're actually gonna stay with the base 20 round magazine here. Now, typically I would recommend the 30 round magazine, but for the purposes of this, uh, I found the 20 round to be more than enough. So we'll go ahead and select just the base 20 round. And then for the underbarrel attachment, now the Ranger foregrip is gonna help you out a lot to increase your range a little bit. But honestly, with this, it's a 12.7 by 55 millimeter rifle. So this is firing a 50 caliber round, essentially. Um, the Merc foregrip is gonna help with that vertical bounce and just overall control, in my opinion. I've tried all the all the foregrips. If you're gonna let this thing go full auto, especially in these close quarter situations where you're gonna be maybe needing to use some hip fire like this, the Merc foregrip is going to be the best option you can get with this weapon because it is the largest caliber of assault rifles that we have in game. So pros are the recoil control as well as the hip fire accuracy, which is going to be good for close quarters. Cons here are going to be the aim down sight speed and the aim walking movement speed. So we'll select that. Now there's our final build for the Odin or the Ash 12. Very awesome build. Now another, another build that I have done in the past is we could get rid of the fully loaded percocent and we could put on the 420 millimeter barrel and then we would just swap out the colossus suppressor this is a really good ash 12 build as well that i do really like and this is great for close quarter situations you can even dump the attack laser for a 30 round if you wanted to but like i said the one build here that i i just showed you is really my favorite build i think for this thing the odin typically people use this at long ranges this is just a really good close quarters build with inside anywhere within 60 meters is going to do a really good job for the reticle here we're going to go ahead and put on the witch and there's our final design again the odin or the ash 12 just a, a powerhouse firing 12.7 by 55 millimeter so it is a 50 cal beast for, made for close range urban combat for the fss federal security service in russia so we'll go ahead now and we'll actually we'll jump into some of the gameplay here as we jump into the gameplay We'll start with our first game here. 
just showing a few clips and we'll jump into some of the other other games that I had. I played this a lot in the Rebirth, uh, or excuse me, the Verdansk Rebirth Resurgence, or the Re Verdansk Resurgence Mini, I think it's called. So it's essentially the same rules as as uh, Rebirth Island, and or Resurgence as it's called here in Warzone. So as long as your one of your teammates are alive, you can spawn back without the Gulag. It's a lot of fun. I honestly, I prefer this a little bit over uh, Rebirth Island, just because I think it's a little bit more close quarters combat. You don't need to worry about all of the uh, longer range engagements. It seems like this is just a lot smaller of a circle, a lot less cover and things like that for the most part. So you're typically dealing, the more of your engagements I would say are within those 60 meter marks. So it's gonna be very effective uh, mode to use this. Uh, you can definitely use it in regular Warzone. It's very effective there as well. However, this is really just kind of where it excels. I would say this is the best mode for it. Now, again, here in season four, we just came out, the Ameli was just released with the MG82, as well as the Nail Gun, all which, you know, the Ameli was actually just nerfed today, but the Nail Gun, I believe, is the second fastest or the fastest TTK weapon in the game at 515 milliseconds right now. So you have these very fast TTK new weapons here. And I wanted to, I know a lot of people aren't really using any modern warfare weapons anymore, and you never ever see a build like this from the Odin. So this is really one of those underrated weapons builds that you can really get away with using, especially in this mode. It's a lot of fun, and especially, like I said, it fires that 12.7 by 55 millimeter round, so it's extremely effective at these close quarters engagements. It's really what it's made for. I really wish they, if, I wish they would just increase the fire slightly, or maybe increase the damage just a little bit to make it a little bit more viable in uh, other modes. But again, if you can get a drop on somebody, you're gonna crush them and they really don't, it, nobody ever expects to get hit with an Odin. So this weapon was put into service in 2011. Again, this was designed for the FSB or now known as the Federal Security Service, the FSS, used in Russia. Again, firing that 12.7 by 55 millimeter STS-130 round. The overall weight of the weapon is 13 pounds. It takes max a 20 round magazine in real life. So a 10 and 20 round magazine here in game, we get the 20, 25, and the 30. Rate of fire in real life is going to be anywhere from 500 to 750 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 290 to 315 meters per second. And again, in real life, effective firing range is one to 300 meters. So this is one of the few bullpup assault rifles we have in Modern Warfare's weapons. However, unfortunately, now that the Cold War weapon seems to be taking the forefront within the game, they seem to be getting buffed and buffed. We did, we did just see the Scar get buffed a little bit, but the Odin here is one weapon that really you only see people use the long range engagement option for this. I'm gonna let you guys listen to this guy's reaction here as I kill him with this Odin again, showing that nobody ever expects you to have an Odin. So listen up to this guy's reaction here. The Odin bow. Nice. Yo, you Dude, he, so you can, you can hear his reaction there. He was not expecting an Odin. Especially, he had pretty good Cold War weapons there. He was not expecting a kill by an Odin. I think he was a little bit shocked there. And again, you see nobody ever using this weapon in general really that much. Especially this type of build. And this thing was just crushing it in close quarter situations. I was able to get, I think, three or four wins total using this. Just in a little bit of gameplay here in this particular game mode for the Verdansk Resurgence Mini mode, I believe is what it's called. But again, a lot of fun. Because it's a small map, you only start, I believe, max 40 or 45 players on the map to start. You already start with a very small circle. So you get your loadout pretty quickly, it's gonna drop, or you can get enough money for it. All close quarter situations, and again, the, the Odin here, or the Ash 12 is really just a very underrated weapon. Unfortunately, with, like I said, with all the Cold War weapons like the Nail Gun and all these other ones with the high, fast TDKs, and right here you can see the far I'm using this just a little bit. Just how little recoil that thing has, just a beam machine. But again, this is a good example of how effective the they have made the Cold War weapons lately over the Modern Warfare weapons. So you can see everyone seems to be using all the Cold War weapons. Modern Warfare seems to be shifting out of the limelight, or has, has already shifted well out of the limelight by this point, but... It's always good to go back and try and find these builds from Mind of Warp that are very viable. And the Odin, or the S12, has always been one of my favorites. It's actually one of the very first weapons I used in Warzone when it came out. I actually used it as the VKS sniper conversion, and I threw a thermal op optic on there and was playing around with that. It's a lot of fun to use. Um, again, with that huge caliber, you're going to hit your targets very hard. 
and they're never really expecting. I think the, the I think don't quote me on this, but I think the TDK for this is around 600 uh, milliseconds, so it is a fairly fast TTK. However, obviously you're going to get beat out by a lot of the weapons from Cold War, AS Val, things like that. Some of the SMGs, but again, the AS-12 definitely holds its own, and you can really get away with this 20 round box mag here of the 12.7 by 55. It's a lot of fun to use. I never really found myself needing the 30 round magazine in this particular mode. Uh, because your engagements are within that sweet zone, you really have more than enough time to take out two or three people with that 20 round magazine if you really need to, and you have time to reload because we're running fully loaded on this. So this gun's a lot of fun. We were able to win quite a few games here. Unfortunately, this max game here, I got seven kills. Uh, and I was just on fire this game with this thing. Unfortunately, I just couldn't see this last guy. Uh, I didn't know he had pushed up that quick. If I had if I had realized he was there, maybe it would have been a different story. He did have a bullfrog, though, so it would have been a little hard. But uh, I had a lot of fun playing with this this weapon and this mode. It's really a lot of fun. Regular Verdansk, very hard right now, like I said, with all the Cold War weapons just being buffed and kind of taking the forefront in Warzone now. Um, Modern Warfare weapons taking the back seat for sure, um, but it, again, you can really get away with this weapon. A lot of fun to use it in this mode, particularly because you don't really need to rely on quote unquote meta weapon builds, you can get away with this. So we got a three or four wins with this thing total um, the past two days, a lot of fun to play with. I had a really good time. Let me know down below what you guys think of this Odin build, the Ash 12 for Warzone in general, or the Mini, Mini Royale versions of Verdansk, Mini Royale, and Re Rebirth Island. Let me know down below what you guys think. Again, this is Buffner Gaming with the Warzone weapons for the Ash 12. Till next time, Buffner Gaming, out.